Hello everyone and welcome back to Project Fern. I'm Danny and today I'm going to be doing a video on why you should buy a Bilingo Multispace. First, we're going to look at all the reasons why I love the car and why you should buy one. And then secondly, we'll move on to common issues that I found in the three years that I've owned a Bolingo Multispace. Now, I bought my car, I think, three and a half years ago. It had 60,000 miles on the clock and it had had one previous owner. They thought there was a problem with the engine, which turned out to be a wheel bearing. Um, I paid a £1,000 for the car and it's probably the best money I've ever spent. I have had to spend bits over the years on the car but nothing too major i'll go through all that in my list now but we're going to start with the positives on why you should buy one so let's kick off with the first one so this car has nine cup holders and um, the guy who invented or designed this car must have been constantly dehydrated or ate a lot of salty foods but yeah it's got nine it's got two cup holders in the front it's then got two litre bottle holders and one litre bottle holders in each door pocket so that takes you up to six and then the seventh one is in the um, rear of the car here for the rear middle passenger. So you'll be thinking, well, you just said there were nine, which moves us on nicely to the next thing, is there's tables on the back of the seat, like little aircraft style tables, and each one of them have also got a cup holder in them. So these tables are super cheesy. I've actually sat in the back of mine once, um, eating a packed lunch when I was driving over from Harrogate over to Skipton. I pulled her over on the left up on the hills. It was lovely. And I just sat in the back with my table down with the sliding door open and was absolutely loving it. A um, little cup holder with my fruit shooting. I was absolutely in my element. So yeah, they're very practical car, as you're going to tell with this list. But that's the first two on the list on what are really positive and why I love this car. Up next is the seating position. You do feel quite high up in these cars. The seating position is quite high as well. This seat, what I'm in now, isn't adjustable. But it just feels like it's about right height where you can just literally drop into it. You're not sitting down into the car. So for people who um, have like back issues, mobility issues, that's why these cars have been so popular. Really good pit seat position, really comfortable as well. There's two armrests on in this car as well. I think all the Bolingos come with armrests of this model. Um, so yeah, the seat position is absolutely spot on. Next one is the headroom. You could actually mount a chandelier, it's that high. Um, when I get in other cars, sometimes it, I do feel like actually quite claustrophobic because if it's a low roof in them as well, I'm not used to having all this space above my head. Um, I just think it's nice, nice and airy. So yeah, that's another good point on the, on the car. I love the large windscreen on the car too. Again, when I get into other cars, it feels like I'm looking through a letterbox. Um, the, the the windscreen is massive on these I did smash one once I put some um, wood in the car and it slid forward because a cyclist pulled out on me and it smashed my front windscreen but I just went through my insurance even when he turned up he were like it's like a van this but that's what it's based on they've just put seats in it but yeah the windscreen I like a, a lot of light coming into the car next is the sound system in this car so in this model I'm in now I think all this I think it's the same across the board I've got two speakers in the dash I've got two in each front door pocket and then you've got some behind me you can just see them up there let me try and get me hand to them there and one up there as well i don't know why i'm struggling pointing but they've actually got them in the back as well and it's absolutely banging when you've got this stereo turned up this one came with a tape player 
I did switch it out for a CD player, but you've got to understand that the, the, the radio units in these cars are coded to the actual car. I don't know if they've got a, a chassis number in or anything like that. So when I put the CD player in here, all it did was just beep. It was like beep, beep. So you have to take it to a Citroen garage and they'll record um, it to your chassis number if you can prove where you bought it from. It's just a security thing that they put on them. But just be aware, if yours comes with a tape player and you switch it out for a Citroen CD player, you're going to then um, have to get it coded. Also, if you put an aftermarket one in, it's then going to stop you from using the, the display up above because that usually displays what radio station you're playing or what CD track you're on as well. Next is the folding rear seats. This car is massive back there. It's just the height you can get in. I know a lot of cars like Estates and stuff, you can get a lot in lengthwise, but this you can just stack as high as you go. I have done a video which will be popping up on the screen now telling you what the boot dimensions are. But the seats fold down so you can just slide things in. I've had fridge freezers in here. I've had 2.4 meter floor um, floorboards, um, like the sheet ones, like when you deck your loft out. Um, the, but then the seats fold up again. Now to make them fold up all the way up, you need, do need to pull the seats forward a little bit, but then you can just push them back. Um, the seats do unbolt and fully come out as well, as you might see with a lot of people who do like camper van conversions and stuff, which might be a possibility of what I'm going to be doing to this. Um, but yeah, the, the space that you get in these is just phenomenal. Um, when you when you put the seats down as well, this one's got a rubber mat built, built in. I think most of them have. So like, if you ever spill anything or anything like that, you can just literally mop the back of your car out. Storage. Right, this is a massive plus for me. I've got a shelf above my head. I've got nets up in the corners here. And then we've got um, a shelf... Uh, what's it called a drawer under the passenger seat and we've also got footwell storage as well in the back so there's plenty of spaces places to put um things in this car you've got netting in the back area as well which um, i'll show you on the screen and you also get like a like a basket in the back a few people have asked me what what it is because there's a missing it's a basket it folds out for a trolley i won't be seeing dead wheeling that into sainsbury's but it is there i've never actually utilized it but it's just a quirky little thing to have now, the roof on this car is like what I class as a standard one. They also do one which is called a modular top, which has got all the plastics running back. It's also got the windows cut into the roof. I don't know of any issues with them leaking. I would prefer to have a modular top, but if you're doing a camper van conversion, it does actually take your height away because it runs pretty much level with this, this front shelf. The only things I'll say about the modular top is as time goes on with these cars and the plastics get older and a bit more brittle, they do squeak a lot. Um, there's no real squeaks or anything to this car, but I I am aware that the modular tops do squeak and rattle a little bit and the plastics can get a little bit discoloured and, um, and, and, and crack sometimes, but they do squeak. Parts for this car are cheap, um, ready available. They're easy to work on. It's just your standard general maintenance of stuff. I'll go into that a little bit um, further on in the video when I'm talking about what you need to look at if you're buying one. But yeah, parts, I've never had a problem getting. You can get them off eBay. There's loads of people who've bought them. You can just, just get the part numbers. I'll put a link in the description to like um, an online parts website where you, you pick your car and stuff and you can literally go through the exploded diagrams of your car and find out what the part numbers are. That way you can go on eBay then and you can find for someone who's got maybe a genuine part that they're selling that's not from Citroen and cost the world like I did with the rear wiper motor. Or you can find the correct aftermarket part because most of the time they'll put the original part number in on the listing. Now one of my favourite bits about this car is the sliding doors. So if you ever go to a supermarket, I don't actually use my boot. I just walk down the side of the car and if someone's part tight, I just slide my door open and throw my shopping on the back seat. There's one on each side absolutely love them you're not opening your doors on anyone um just like it's like being in the a team really they can be a bit stiff sometimes to to shut them people are, are weird with them i think they grab at the bottom of the handle i've never had a problem shutting them but if someone gets out of the back of the car and tries shutting it they struggle with it i don't know why but they open freely i don't know what that's all about but yeah most people who get out of the back of the car they can't actually shut it and then i have to get out and just show them how easy it is and they look at me confused like i'm an idiot so the rear tailgate opens up and above. I've mentioned this in another video. If it's a rainy day or you want to change your boots after a walk, you can sit on the lip of the back seat, uh, the back um, boot floor, the, 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 the tailgate's up and you're not getting wet. You can get awnings for the back of these cars, which clip onto the side of that. And you can have just like an out bit if you convert it to a camper van or you just want to make a bit of an awning if you go out walking anywhere. Um, 
absolutely love it i know a lot of people say when they're watching the kids play football they back the car up to the field and open the boot and they all stand under it watching it if it's raining but i don't mind that you just got to be aware if you go to a supermarket someone parks up behind you you're probably not going to be able to swing that boot open this car has a pretty flat dashboard so you can actually put a cup anywhere or put a, a diary or put anything on that dashboard your phone it's not actually going to slide off I've had people who've got in and put a cup of coffee on the dash and forgotten started talking to me. I've drove off and they've not even realised and the cup's not even spilled any. Um, I just think it's such a good use of space in the car. Um, dashboards now are all modular, like all curved and all fancy, but in this one, they're just like it's just flat and you can just put stuff on it. It's like another shelf and I love it. The car's got pop-out rear windows. It's got two sets on the passenger sliding doors and also in the rear section. These are brilliant in summer. Um, you can leave them popped open, no one can really break into the car, they obviously can rip them off and get in that way, but who wants to break into a Blingo multi-space? That's what's so good about them as well, they're not a theft, like no thieves want to steal these things. So yeah, you can pop them windows open, let us air circular, and again, if you're converting yours into a camper van, you can pop them open at night, stops condensation, lets fresh air in, and everyone's happy. Fuel consumption, so mine's got the 1.6 HDI 75 brake horsepower engine. People might think, oh, that's going to be underpowered, but I tell you, it's not. As you notice on my channel, I've had got the evil and stuff. I've had some pretty high-powered cars and stuff, and I don't sit in this car thinking, oh, my God, it, it's horrendous. I have no problem with it. It, it. it overtakes fine. It gets up to speed fine. I've had it fully laden, and it, and it still gets up to speed fine. So I, I, I love the 1.6 HDI engine. I think it's an absolute cracker, and I think it's a 55-litre or 60-litre tank. Yeah, I think that's about right. And out of a full tank, I get about 500 miles, you know. Um, I'm running about 45 to 50 miles per gallon. And like this car's driven at, if it, this car's driven at a speed limit wherever it goes. If it's 30, I'm doing 30. If I'm on the motorway, I'm up to 70 as quick as I can. Um, I won't say it's ragged about or anything, but I do utilise the car and make use of all the gears, etc. in the rev range. So uh, to still get 45, 50 miles per gallon is absolutely amazing. So I put a fuel additive in my car. It helps like clean out soot, whatever is in there. It cleans the injectors out apparently and stuff. And the car does feel like it um, runs better once it's had one in. I put one in every three tanks. So I wait till it's bone dry and fuel light comes up. I only ever tank this car. So fuel light comes on, I fill it up. Fuel light comes on, I fill it up. So when I'm due that, I just make sure I have the additive in the car because it does smell. I put 50 milliliters in the petrol cap, uh, fuel cap before I fill up. And then I fill up and I let it do its thing. So I know this sounds like a bit of a mad one, but the wash the washer reservoir on this car must be about 40 litres. It just seems to take forever to fill up. But then once you've filled it up, you know what it's like when it starts sleeting the salt on the road. You're putting your windscreen wipers on every two seconds. I always keep a two litre bottle of water in the car anyway to, to fill it up just if need be. But like it literally takes about four litres, so you very rarely have to top your washers up as well. Right, so we're going to move on to the negatives now, and I'm going to be super, super biased because I own this car, and you know how much I love it. The only negative for me in this car, and if anyone's going to buy one, you need to make sure it has this, and it's not got air conditioning. This car would be like the 100% best car I've ever had in my life if it had air conditioning. So all you need to look out for when you're looking on pictures on Auto Trader or on eBay or anything, where you rear, there's a blank, there's a blank um, button in the middle. And that would say aircon on. I don't know whether some came with it, but I know it was definitely an option. And like, if this car had the aircon, it would be amazing. Especially if you had that modger top, because it's got um, heater vents in the top as well. So if you've got back seat passengers, they can actually utilise the aircon as well. So that's the positives and negatives out of the way. And I'm going to move on now to what to look out for when buying one of these cars. Me personally... I don't think there's much that you need to look out for, but I'll just go through what I've had to deal with. We've owned in this car for like three and a half, four years now. I've done best part of 70,000 miles in it. Um, it had full service history this car, which I've continued. It's got um, loads of stamps in the book, and then I've started obviously doing it myself. Um, so yeah, let's get on with this list, and then um, it'll just give you a little bit more information about it. First up on the list is the timing belt. Every 60,000 mile, I think they say, um, when you're looking for one, always try and make sure it's had the timing belt and water pump done at 60,000 mile. I messaged a guy a few months ago who had one with a, um, where the axle had gone on the back and I asked him if it had the timing belt and water pump done and he messaged me back like an right arse and he was like, it's a 500 quid car and I'm like, yeah, but that's like someone 
it would have been worth some money at some point and I want to know whether it's had its I'm not saying have you done it but like it, it, it it's not a pricey job it's something that you need to have done mine's due again and I don't know if it's try it on my own or just pay someone to do it because I think it's a really critical thing people don't get them done and that's when you lead into to problems if you maintain your cars they'll go forever um, so try and make sure they've had the timing belt done and water pump and if they say yeah it has just try and make sure they've got a receipt if not and they say they've had a dealer done it try and contact the dealer and get a receipt from them too but any car I'd be getting if I got another one of these and it done 80 odd thousand mile I'd be getting that done first next is drop links um, if you get in one and when you turn around you hear like a knocking noise it is going to be the drop links um, I've had about three sets put on this um, I use this car a lot they're about £12 a pair. They're really easy to fit. But like this this car seems to eat drop links. I don't know what it is about them. But you can get Citroen ones. I've had genuine Citroen ones and they've lasted just as long as aftermarket ones. So I just stick with the £12 a pair one now. £6 a side. And they take about 10 minutes to fit. Let's move on to the clutch next. My car did 100,000 mile before it needed a clutch. Um, I can be quite lazy with a pedal on this as well, but you know, keeping my foot on it when really I should take it fully off, not depressing it all the way to change gear and stuff. And what happened was the thrust bearing eventually got stuck, uh, smashed through some or other, and I had to have the clutch done. It's quite an expensive job, but to think you get 100,000 mile out of it. So if you're buying one that's done 100,000 mile or above, or 80 or above, you, you should be expecting that the clutch might need doing soon. Um, if it's done over 800,000 mile, I'd, I'd be expecting that you're going to have to get it done at some point. You'll be able to tell when it when 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 you drive the car, when you test drive it. But yeah, just be aware that I got 100,000 mile out of my clutch, which I don't think is bad going at all. So the rear axle, in my previous video, you've seen that I've got a rear axle waiting to go on the back of this. They just give way. This one has been absolutely hammered with the weight that I've put in the back of it. But I'll just like to say and make a point of this. People getting this car can't believe how clean it is. And like I've literally used this van as a skip. But it shows if you're careful when you're putting stuff in your car and you always like clean it out afterwards or you put rags up where the paint is so it doesn't get scratched, you can still use it as a van but make sure it still looks like a car all the time as well and it cleans up nice. So the rear axle on this car is gone. Um, it's clunking, clicking, it's horrendous. Um, the wheels almost start pointing outwards. It's 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 not enjoyable, really. It is, I do believe it's an MOT fail. I'm going to be doing a video on how you replace one. I don't think it's going to be an easy job for a lot of people to do. I think I might I might going to have to get a lift to help off someone to help me put it push it up. The the, the rear axle is 42 kilograms on it all on its own. You've got to swap some bits over and stuff. But we'll have to see how I get on with that when I crack on with it. But I am quite looking forward to doing that job. So be careful. If you see the, the, the camera, the wheels is like outwards like this. Um, or like in the video I'm showing you at the moment. It's going to need a, a new axle. They're about £300 just for the axle. That's re that's refurbished. Um, so then you're going to have to pay someone to switch it all over for you. I don't know how, much, how many hours are, are in that. We'll soon find out when I do mine. But it's not a cheap job. But it's not an overly expensive job either if you think you get 100,000 mile out of the axle. It's a renowned issue with the Citroëns. They used to go on the, the Saxo. So the Citroën Zara's, the Zara Picasso. So it is something to look out for and it is a major flaw with these cars. The next thing, if you've got bulbs out at the back and they say oh, it's just a bulb, it could actually be the bulb holder. I've replaced three now. I replaced one in a video the other day and then the other side stopped working. And when I looked, the seal had gone on the bulb holder. Um, and it started to corrode at the bottom. I just got another one. They're about £20 each. Well worth doing because that's what police like pulling you for. No lights working or a brake light out and stuff. And then they start going over your car. So it's just better to sort it out straight away. They're dead easy to fit. Real light out. Swap the bulbs over into the holder. Multi-plug on the back. Five minute job and you're done. You'll need a pair of pliers to get the rear lights off though. So when I stuck my head under my car and looked at the rear axle. It is getting a bit surface rusty bubbly under the floor pan. Um, I do believe these cars, correct me if I'm wrong, are actually galvanised. You'll only get rust on the sills and underneath if um, the paint's been chipped and water's managed to get in behind the paint and start rotting that way. Um, they painted quite deep. I think they painted about 10 inches under to under the body of the car because I cleaned mine up once. I fitted a neon ground kit for a laugh. Um, all LED lights that lit up and moved to the beat of the music. So I was under there and I cleaned it all off and I was surprised how deep the paint went back. Um, I've never, I've not seen too many with rusty sills or anything like that because, like I say, I believe they're galvanised. The ones I have seen, you can see there's been some damage there, which has then um, affected the paint. 
allowed water through to the metal and the elements and then it started to rust but yeah just stick your head underneath and have a look on the rear axle and the floor pan because that's the only things that i've actually seen corrode the other thing to look out for is there is an abundance of these low mileage one owner Bolingo multi spaces 56,000 miles one owner selling for my dad on ebay now they are a lot pricier i obviously got mine for a bargain four years ago for a thousand pound i see them from between two and a half to four thousand pound they'll get you a decent one um Obviously, they're a lot more expensive at dealerships, but you want to try and get a privately owned one. Usually, the, the son or daughter selling it on behalf of the parents who don't use it anymore. Um, so, yeah, the, there's still an abundance of low mileage, really well looked after cars. And then there's an absolute abundance of ones that have been used for painters, decorators, vans, plasterers, dog walkers. I just stay away from them. They stink. They, they, they messed up inside and you may as well just put the money towards getting a better one than trying to repair one that looks like that. An issue I've seen on quite a few now is lack of peel. This is wicked red, I think. I've got lack of peel on my bonnet, my roof, um, and a little bit on the, the pillars here at the side. I don't know if this is because of the amount of motorway miles I've done, uh, but it is a problem. I've seen it on the Forest Greens one as well. The The lack of peel is annoying. I've just let mine go. I'm not bothered. I might get this car resprayed at some point anyway. Um, but yeah, that's something to look for. If you start to see the, the lacquer is peeling in places, it's probably going to get a lot worse like mine. So there's a plinth on the back where the number plates are. There's two types. On the later ones, like mine, it goes past the number plate cut out, which I'll show you on the screen now. These become very br brittle because people use them to pull the boot open or to check the boots shut. And they're not, there's literally just four studs holding them on and they're plastic welded. So one day I'm going to work and I've had a problem the week before where I've not shut the boot properly and the boots opened and loads of my stuff fell out into the road and caused havoc. So I was driving to work, a bit paranoid. I thought, I'll just check the boot and I've pulled that trim and slipped back and I banged my head. Um, the trims are not cheap and it's hard to find up, get older one off from a breaker's yard because they usually break them when they take them off. You've seen in a previous video that I've had to reseal mine back on because I'm not paying £145 for another one. But I found the actual best method now is to put number tapes number plate tape around it and cut it out with a blade and then just stick it back on and it's it's lasting it's it's more solid than when i siliconed it on so i made up with that and it looks 10 times better like i said there are two types there's the one that goes past it and then there's one on the earlier ones and some later ones where it actually sits in the recess next on the list this is just a minor one but headlight bulbs are quite tricky to change on these if you're doing the passenger one take that fuse box cover off it gives you a little bit of extra space for your hand because when you put your hand under the there's the the slam panel or whatever you want to call it it's quite sharp underneath so you will cut your wrist to bits and they like stingy cuts really pretty annoying but that's just one thing to look out for as well headlight bulbs can be quite tricky so if someone's you go looking at one and they've not replaced the headlight bulb it's because they can't bother because they know they're a pain so moving on to the engine now, I can only talk about the engine that I've had in the car and that I've got most experience with, which is the 1.6 HDI. This is probably goes for the same with the um, 2 litre HDI as well. I've never heard any major problems with the petrol engines. I think they did a 1.4 and a 1.6. They also did a 1.9 TD um, diesel as well, which apparently just go forever. Um, I'm up to 125,000 miles in mine. I can't tell you how light this car drives. It's got more than enough power for me for the 75 brake horsepower, but I'll go through the common issues that I've had. There isn't many. Honestly, there isn't many. Um, so yeah, let's just crack on with them ones. So my engine started getting a bit knocky, and when you start it up, the revs can like v v can um, like fluctuate slightly, but once it gets going, it's fine. It's a diesel engine at the end of the day. They're a bit rough and ready. The only issues I've had with mine have been the injector seals, they're about 13 pounds for new ones. I'm going to be doing a video on how you do them too. You get it's a copper seal basically at the bottom of the injector. It's an easy enough job to do, a bit time consuming and fiddly. You've got to clean all the injectors up. But what happens is is the that copper seal goes and then it fires like a tar type thing up, um, tars up around the injector, um, splatters on the on top of the H, under the HDI cover. I'll show you that as well on the screen. It's a quick way to tell when you go and look at one. Just pull that cover off. If it looks like it's got um, like splatter on it or like grease, it, it's because the injector seals have gone. Look, you'll probably see two injectors down there that are all tarred up around it. 
The only problem with the injector seals going is it does put like fumes into the cabin and a quick fix is to get a long 7mm hex key and tighten the injector bolts up. Um, but that smell, does, it, when I was driving it and the smell was at its strongest, it was giving me headache, it was horrible. Um, that can't be good for the body. So if you do start smelling few, like a like a, a diesel smell, a smoky, fumey smell in the, the, the cabin, it's probably your injector seal's gone. That's on the HDI engines. So I'd get it to a mechanic. They don't charge a lot to do it if you want to pay someone to do it. Um, they'll have it done in a couple of hours, but yeah, make sure you get that done straight away. If you go looking at one, pop that HDI cover off, have a look underneath to see if you can see any splatter on it. Have a look for the injectors being tied up. And then you can say to them, look, your injector seals are gone and try and get some money knocked off. The only other thing that I've had a problem with this car, bar general wear and tear items like your discs and pads, rear brake shoes. I've got that to do on this car as well. Um, bulbs go in, the clutch, which is like you all expect for a 120,000 mile car is um, is on the dash bulbs. Like they just go you might think the clock's broke but it's not same with the heat of um bulbs a guy's put a message on uh, the video when i posted it on facebook saying is this how you replace the, da um, the heater bulb as well i'm not sure i'm going to take it out because my toggle switch the one where you change the direction of the heaters that bulb seems to have gone but they're not broke or anything you just literally change the bulbs L lucas t5s little tiny bulbs and yeah that's about it really that's everything i can think of with the bolingo multispace Right guys, so there's my list of why you should buy a Bolingo Multispace. I've gone into as much detail as I can over the three year, three and a half years, four years of owning one. They're an absolute cracking car. Um, I know people say, oh, I can't believe you drive that, whatever. Leave them be. If they, they're just jealous. If they own one, they would see how practical it were. People understand who are around me how much fun this car is, how practical it is, um, how efficient it is, and how cheap they are now, you know. Um, the later Bolingos, this is, say, called a Bolingo first. They then did the Bolingo after this, the Bolingo Multispace. That's an absolute cracking car as well. If I was to ever change this, I would get another one or maybe go for the one newer. The latest Bolingo that's out at the moment, that is an absolutely amazing car. Um, they've come on so much. It's probably gone a little bit too um, posh for me. They're very expensive as well, but it's no denying that they're an absolute nice car. They do it in two versions as well. They do it in an XL, um, which is... Um, a little bit longer but yeah good luck if you're thinking of buying one i hope you found something interesting or a few pointers that are going to help you out when you do go looking for one in this video i've still got plenty of bolingo content to come rear axle injector seals front discs and pads um drop links uh, we've got abs light we've got um, a cv boot that's clipped gone um yeah we've got a lot of things to go really drop links i don't know if i just said that so yeah make sure you subscribe hit the like button any comments put them in the comment section below um if i've missed anything out by all means put it in the comment section below too there'll be a lot of people out there who's probably had two three four of these and have got a lot more experience than mine i bumped into a guy the other day who had an all four plate desire model i think that had the mod your top two liter hdi you had it from brand new goes to france in it and everything he was over the moon with it it was just starting to have a few problems with a few sensors and stuff which again you expect from these high mileage cars but again he swore by it was over the moon with it i actually offered to buy it off him and um, he said no way which is usually the case when people own a blingo multi-space so yeah um thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video